as I'm sure that many of you do, I sometimes find myself uh, engaging in the practice of eternal doom scrolling, especially when I'm bored or, to be fair, on the toilet probably. But every once in a while, I do stumble upon some content that I actually find really interesting, uh, whether it's people talking or maybe animals or objects or people making cool, weird sounds. My kind of producer ear tells me that I should use these sounds to make songs. And that's what we're gonna do today because this is the first installment of Real to Real, a series in which, as I just mentioned, I take sounds from social media and try to turn them into beats. Yes, I know, this is not an original concept. Some other people are doing it on the internet and specifically on YouTube, but I'm gonna do it my way uh, using all of these cool things all of these samplers and synths and blah 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 so yeah let's get into it let's watch it again wow this is pretty cool cool I might I might actually use this let's move on what's this all about Honestly, I don't even know what this is. I forgot I even had it on my saved reels. All right, this is absolutely disgusting, but um, I now remember why I had it saved in my reels. It's because of that which is a great sound for maybe like uh, riser effects. That's pretty cool, that's pretty cool. Tacos and sushi, tacos and sushi, and antidepressant. Yeah, yeah, I like this one, I remember this one, this is funny. All right. Baby crying. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty cool. What's incredible about this reel is that that first hit, uh, like it seems like there's no sound whatsoever coming from that mm, bell or bowl or whatever it is, and then it just goes mm, like this. Um, yeah, it might be, it might be good, it might be good to use. Oh, this is. This is so good. This is so good. I kind of don't want to touch it because it's perfect as it is. But they crack yo! They crack teams to be a <laughs> Probably shouldn't be laughing about people being, you know, addicted, but yeah. Wow, this is insane. I'm definitely gonna use this. I'm definitely gonna use this. All right, I think that's enough for today. Let me just grab some of these samples and let me see what I can cook. So first of all, we're gonna import the magic frog and the spatula sandwich sounds. I'm gonna reserve bank A for the frog and bank B for the spatula. I'm just gonna play some effects on the frog and see where it leads me. Okay, so I use the sound in part number four for the beat and maybe the sound on part number two in a drop or transition. Let's move to bank B. I'm gonna use this sound as a percussion, so I'm gonna need to chop it up. There's no need for you to see this incredibly boring process, so I'll skip to the fun part, which is also boring, because <laughs> I don't record almost anything in real time on the 404. I'm gonna use the step sequencer to build this awesome metallic loop. Now, this is a useful tip, so check it out. You can adjust the volumes of entire banks by pressing shift plus the bank you want to affect. And then you just turn the encoder up or down. I'm gonna copy this pattern here on another slot. And when you're happy with something on the SP404 NK2, always make a copy of it. That way, if you proceed recording more stuff and you end up not liking it, you don't need to start from scratch. Let's import some drum sounds, and of course we're gonna use Big Umami Bombs Volume 1, Version 2 for this. Version 2 is a free upgrade to Version 1 with louder kicks and 30 new sounds. You can find it at BigUmami.com, link in description. <laughs> 
Alright, I know I said I don't record almost anything in real time, but I'm feeling myself today, so here we go. This is pretty good, but it's also a good thing that I copied the pattern before adding the drums, because now I feel like I should also have a more straight, four on the floor type drum pattern too. Before doing that though, I'm gonna spice this frog up a bit with one of my favorite effects on the 404, which is Slicer. Yeah! I love this thing. See, now that the drums are straighter and less wonky, Slicer adds a lot of movement to the overall beat. I resample this and keep it in bank A with the rest of its froggy frog frog friends. That way I can also add some more weird effects. Maybe later though. So now we have these two cool patterns that can play into each other in different ways. We need to lay out a structure to make it make sense, but for now we still need some chords, some melodies, some bass. And all of these things the MC101 is really good at, so let me just grab that real quick. Let's start with some chords. I'm gonna use the great MC101 chord designer. I actually made a full video about it, you can find it in the upper right corner right now. I'm gonna select minor scale, 1, 3, 7, 9 interval, right to all, and let's change this sound. I like this one. Let's move on to the bass. I want something simple and subby right here, because there's enough going on with the rest of the song already. This sounds pretty cool. Now I'm thinking it might be worth finding a cool lead sound for a little phrase or riff to play back every once in a while. The MC101 is like, yo word, let me give you every cheesy lead sound ever known to humanity. I'm not kidding, this list goes on for days, and days, and days. Alas, I'm gonna settle with this one. I'm probably gonna add some more extra effects on top in the SP404 anyway. And I'm gonna do that not just for the lead sounds, but for all the sounds coming off the MC-101. That's for two reasons. First of all, I like all of my sounds to be contained just in one machine. And secondly, recording audio in the SP-404 allows me to get super creative with resampling and stacking lots and lots of effects either on a full loop or on a chopped up piece. Let me show you exactly what I mean with this. Right now, for example, I'm recording a loop of this main synth sound. I'm recording it in audio while moving the filter, and I'm going to use this loop as part of my build-up. Next though, I'm going to record another loop of the same synth, but this time I'll make it simpler and not going to move many parameters around. Now it gets interesting though. I'm gonna chop this new recording up and I'm gonna apply different effects on each of the new chops and resample them. I have four main chords and one passing chord, so that's gonna take up the whole bank, I think. Let's start with chord one, apply some Toguro, and maybe some reverse, 
Sample 2, I'm going to use a Big Crush. I'm going to use some reverb. Sample 3, I'm going to use some chorus and maybe an even bigger reverb. And chord 4 is a passing chord, so I'm just going to leave it as is. Chord 5 is the same as chord 1, but I'm going to select it from a later part of the loop where the filter is more open. I'm going to add some reverb and we're good. Now it's crucial that I put everything in a mute group. That way when I perform with these shops, they don't overlap. It sounds great, right? So much better than just using the MC-101 in MIDI sync. Now, remember I also recorded the full loop for the build-up section. I'm gonna add some spice to that. Let's add delay and resample the whole thing. Also, right before the drop happens, I want this sound to get cut out with a low pass filter sweep. So I'm just gonna perform that and resample it. I resampled all the percussions in the build up section, added some effects, and resampled them as a loop. This loop also fades out in the end in order to give some breathing space to that filter sweep and a Tom Tom's fill that I also inserted. Now, all I need is a noise riser, full tutorial on how to make them in the top right hand corner. And that pretty much rounds up the build up section. I'm gonna need an intro now, so let me just import this ambient T type sound. I'm gonna add some effects here and there. Cool, I think we have all the sections sorted out right now. I'm gonna do some extra mixing and some other boring shit off camera, cause I don't want to make this video like two hours long or something. But if you really want to get more in detail, however, let me just know in the comments. Because if there's enough interest, I might actually do some super long, super detailed videos for like membership viewers or something. Also, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to send me more cool reels you'd like me to remix, either in the comments or via email at info at bigumami.com or directly on Instagram at bigumami. Alright, let's have a listen at the final beat.
All right, and that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. I know this is a bit of a brand new series. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe this video. Please visit my bigumami.com uh, website where you can find some sweet, sweet sample packs. And yeah, love you very much. See you next time.